Hi. First one on. Hi, hi. Hi, Mario. Good morning. I'm coming to you from Portland, Oregon, west coast of the United States. Hi, Mike. Hello from Istanbul. Hi. <laughs> so many friends, so many hearts. I hope you, can, you guys can hear me well. Uh, we have another super special episode for you today. And I'm very, very excited to, to interview you. Um, some of my favorite sketchers from all the way from South America. And um, before, we, before we do that, I wanted to say that um, you're probably surprised that we don't see Rob Sketcherman <laughs> greeting and interviewing everybody. Uh, Rob as well, he's probably watching us right now. He is taking a week off, a well-deserved week, because he's been doing shows nonstop every week for eight episodes. <laughs> so we're giving him a little break. And um, I'm also hoping to help our guests today with my uh, poor Spanish to help communicate with us. <laughs> Here's Rob. So here's what I want you to do. Let's give Rob some hearts and some love because he's been working so hard, so hard um, on USK Talks. He's given so much to our community. So I want to see some hearts for Rob, please. Yes. Yes, Rob, these are for you. And you deserve, um, you deserve all those hearts. Hello from Spain. Hi. So happy to see you guys. So you remember that last week we uh, left you off with a challenge to tell some stories to observe in your immediate communities um, changes that are taking place. The world is, is, is going through some stuff right now. So you have filled the feed with amazing drawings, amazing stories of change. And um, it's always a treat for us on the USK Talks team to see um, the, the sketches that you do of us during each show. We love those. Please keep doing them. We also um, love to see how you respond to the challenges that we present to you. And um, it was my turn to, to really enjoy the, the stories and the sketches. So I, I just wanted to take a moment and take, um, take a, a look at both of them. So re you remember, I asked you to document change, to look at the world, immediate world, um, and see how the world is changing and, and try to tell a story in drawing. And Mike Daikubara, who was here as well last week, um, ask you to um, also document how celebrations have changed at this time and um, to kind of mark, um, draw a story of our celebration. So here's, um, here's what we have. Um, a, few, a few sketches I wanted to show, share with you. Some of you have ventured outside for the first time in a long time and you saw um, how streets and buildings were the same, but People look different. People had masks on. Um, uh, this is, I believe, by um, Roisin, who is a friend of the show. <laughs> she celebrated with her husband um, the finishing of her book. And here's a sketch of, of that celebration. Definitely spells celebration. Um, we have Another sketcher who went to uh, a very beautiful place where they typically have a lot of shops open. There is a lot of commerce, uh, but this time it was it was pretty empty. But she still managed to find material to tell a story. Um, 
another sketcher saw a shop that was is about to be demolished because it's next to a, a bridge and it's part of the construction work and unfortunately it's going to be gone. <clears throat> we have, um, I believe this is Barbara. She's talked about how restaurants are having a hard time surviving at this time and how sometimes farmers and restaurants partner up to um, help each other at this time. Uh, I love this one. This is a, a, a little stand in Nebraska and a little girl uh, put up uh, some food, some goodies and wrote a note, please help yourself. It's all free, free food and you're loved. This was super, super touching. Um, this, this is fantastic. This was in response to Mike's challenge to show celebration. Uh, but it also shows how our celebrations have changed. So in a way, it responded to both of our challenges and it showed how um, people are doing celebrations in cars as a car parade to mark uh, birthdays. I think in this case, it was uh, somebody's graduation. Uh, this is Matt Lett from Paris and he's another friend of the show. We had him um, on a few weeks ago and he ventured out um, and tried to document how uh, Parisians who love to sit in their little outdoor cafes and enjoy their, um, their drinks uh, and aperitif. And here they all have to kind of stand in their masks um, on the sidewalk <laughs> and still socialize. So I thought it was as always done with a lot of love and a lot of humor from Matt. Um, this is a sad story that um, uh, a sketcher documented of her, something happening in her backyard where they're converting um, a natural area to a, an agricultural field. Uh, she stood there and talked to her neighbor and documented this. And I, I'm just going to show one more. This is a sketcher from Hong Kong. She managed to draw the same place before and after. She, was, she had a sketch of this restaurant before the pandemic, I believe it's on the bottom, and then how things have changed once the pandemic started. Um, restaurants have opened up in that area, but um, it's a lot less people, and of course, things are a little different. <laughs> so yes, Rob is saying, what an amazing way to see what's happening in the cities around the world, and I agree. So today we have a very special show. Um, for several reasons. One is that it's our last show in this time zone. So we are setting our clocks back 12 hours and uh, next eight episodes will we'll concentrate on Asia, Australia and uh, voices uh, from the west coast of the United States. Um, and just one second. <laughs> We have our first guest, so I want to make sure that we can connect with him soon. Um, so like I said, don't forget that we will be live at a different time next Sunday, back with Rob, I hope. But uh, we're still here for you. We still are uh, on IGTV. We're still on YouTube. So you can always watch the show um, wherever you are, even if if the new time falls on deep, deep uh, in the middle of the night for you. So please continue drawing, please continue watching. And uh, USK Talks team is super grateful for all of the feedback, all of your hearts, all of the comments that we're receiving. And today we're talking about South America. Uh, let's see some hearts. If you've traveled to South America, you've sketched there, you love that region. It's an amazing, um, amazing continent that we, there's no way we can cover everything in one hour. Um, but we'll at least try to connect with two sketchers today. And then we'll have to come back and hear from, of course, the elephant in the room, Brazil, another amazing area. And um, hopefully hear some uh, women sketcher from some women sketchers as well. So I see a lot of hearts for Brazil, for South America, and uh, let's welcome our first guest. 
Um, he is a frequent uh, teacher and visitor to urban sketching symposiums. Um, he doesn't need introduction to some people, very beloved instructor. His name is Norberto Dorantes, and he's coming to us all the way from Buenos Aires, Argentina. So let's see how it goes. Connecting. Yeah. Hi, hey, how are you? Hola. It's good to see you again. <laughs> good thank you. Thank, thank you very much for the invitation. <laughs> uh, I'm very, very happy to be with you and all the friends for your and sketches. Thank you guys for all the work, job. Uh, you're amazing. I'm very, very uh, miss you this year, but maybe the next year. There will be many more symposiums, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. In the meantime, how are you and how are things in Buenos Aires? Uh, Sorry, sorry, I didn't hear ¿Cómo estás? ¿Qué tal las cosas uh, en, en Buenos Aires? Oh, okay. like all the places in, in the world, it's, it's not easy. All the people uh, go to, yesterday, go to outside to uh, ask to the government to open all. <laughs> it's a crazy thing. But we have maybe 70, 70 days inside of our homes. It's 70 long days. 70. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> it's exhausted. <laughs> but we work inside of the home, draw, work, cook, clean, of all, all 24 hours. Yeah, Everything is, is inside the home now. <laughs> yes, yes, but it's okay. It's times, times. So, so Norberto, for those uh, viewers who don't know who you are, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, uh, I'm Mexican. Uh, obviously, my face is like Aztec, something like this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Mexican, but I live in South America for, I think, 22 years. Wow. Uh, 18, in, 18 in, in Argentina, but I live in, in Chile and Colombia too. Uh, but now I live in Argentina. Uh -huh. I'm a South America people now. Uh, yeah. They are adopting. <laughs> you represent the whole continent. Yes, for example, yeah. in my home, uh, my daughter uh, born in Chile, my son in Mexico, my wife as uh, for Argentina, mm -hmm. we are a mix. So it's, it's interesting. Yeah, Latin America. But uh, I study architecture, but I love draw for all my life. I never go to art school. Uh, I learn uh, for myself, but maybe I have a, I, I'm an urban sketcher for maybe 45 years. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the original. Long time. The original. Long time. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's, um, let's show some of your work. And while we're looking at it, tell us about Buenos Aires. How no. is how is it similar and how is it different from um, other places in South America? Yeah, Buenos Aires is very interesting because obviously it's a Latin place, but uh, it's a most European place in, in all Latin America. Uh, in Latin. So there are a little architecture representation for Spanish, but there are a culture, for, for example, the, the places like La Boca, for example, is uh, Italian, when Italian um, uh, culture goes to Buenos Aires, immigrants go to Buenos Aires establishment in this, uh, in this place of the city, uh, the, uh, in the border of the city, but it's very interesting. Uh, there are a lot of people for Spain, for uh, Germany, for uh, Dinamarca. Uh, for example, there are a big community from Chilean 
eh, Perú, uh, Paraguay, Uruguay, etcétera, etcétera. So super, It's, uh, super international place. Lots of immigrants, lots of recent immigrants. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, it's very interesting. This is the difference. For example, in Mexico, if you go to Subway, you <laughs> meet only Mexicans. <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, no more. But it's common, for example, in in Buenos Aires to see another accents, uh, mm -hmm. colors of uh, of things, uh, uh, languages. Uh, so this is for uh, for example the um, uh, Corrientes Street is the very beautiful place. Uh, the architect the architect is very um, uh, French, but mm -hmm. modern too. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because all the the name of the city is um, Buenos Aires, but Uh, we talk about the city that never sleep because <laughs> all the people uh, use all the culture uh, available in in the city. So it's, it's very interesting. This is the the corner, for example, the the uh, what's the name of the basilica, the cathedral of Buenos Aires is a. Uh, Temp Roman temple <laughs> is interesting. It's very different than other places in Latin America. <laughs> so, yeah, very different. Yes. Very, very different. Uh, I, uh, it's a mixture between uh, very common Latin American problems, colors, feelings, mm -hmm. and sophisticated. This is a very special corner for me. Uh, it's uh, it, the downtown. I love this corner. I draw all a lot of times. Uh, it's a very intense uh, street in uh, downtown. Florida mm -hmm. Street is the name. So it's, it's interesting. Somebody, somebody is asking you where uh, where do you live? If you lived in uh, Recoleta, I guess somebody knows some neighborhoods in Buenos Aires. <laughs> No, I, I'm not living where Recoleta. <laughs> <laughs> Recoleta is very, very glamorous. Yeah. Very glamorous. I live in a normal neighborhood. <laughs> I'm not from Recoleta. But it's interesting. I love Recoleta. I have friends in Recoleta. So it's interesting because the uh, Buenos Aires, the Porteño is the name of the people knows uh, uh, la gente de la capital se llama porteño en español it's very like french people like this but if you go inside you find a lot of people who loves friend friendly uh, For example, I love this place in uh, in the port of uh, Buenos Aires. Mm -hmm. This is a, a good place. Uh, it's the most uh, rich place in all the Buenos Aires. It's Puerto Madero. And uh, now it's a, a big uh, place to go to tourists and all. But uh, it's tourists, but all the people in, in, in the city goes because there are uh, big places, open big places, and all the people uh, uh, go and cross to another uh, with different level of reach, uh, Absolutely, yes. And of course, the, tell us about the, the famous giant wide avenues. <laughs> yes. Maybe this avenue uh, have uh, maybe 70 kilometers, something like this. It's very long. We have 9 de Julio. It's a big, uh, uh, maybe we have, uh, I don't know the name exactly, but 
It's very interesting. Uh, I live uh, very close to this place. It's very yeah. difficult to cross. But it's <laughs> interesting for me because you obviously not now, but uh, it's very intense. It's like uh, Tokyo or something like this. Mm -hmm. But uh, there are a lot of, of people uh, uh, who sail uh, in the streets, like uh, Latin America. It's the two two sides of, of Latin America. This uh, street uh, live, life, and the, on the other hand, the sophisticated places. So this is very popular, but it's an amazing place. So speaking of popular and speaking of what's happening right now, what are you sketching right now? Um, what <clears throat> attracts your attention in this moment in Buenos Aires? Yes, uh, for example, um, the, the Argentine people is very friendly, but it's sometimes it's not friendly. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but in, in, the, in that uh, drawing, uh, we have a big problem in all the country without mm -hmm. electric uh, current. Uh -huh. So maybe right. we have... 10 days without electric lights and nothing. Oh. 10 days. 10 days. 10 days <laughs> with, uh, without elevator, without lights, without nothing. It's a crazy thing. So all the neighbors go and uh, call all and go outside the, the and street and close the street and ask the government to fix it the problem but it's normal for example in 20, 2002 there are uh, i think 20 uh, meetings or como se dice manifestaciones protests 20 protests per day per day per, per day wow <laughs> so much sketching material for me <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> So, I'm very busy. <laughs> wow, it's uh, obviously the, the people uh, need to uh, man, uh, 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 manifest, uh, manifest, uh, manifest, uh, manifest, uh, manifest, uh, manifest, uh, opinions. I mean, I, I don't forget. Them. Of course, people need to express when they're not being yes. heard. There's a lot of, uh, this is a lot of what we're talking about in this country right now. Yes, 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 yeah. yes. So, <laughs> all right. So, yeah. tell us, you said there's this formal tourist touristic side, and then there is a lot of um, kind of more common common things that that yeah. I think only if you live there you notice, or if you stay for a long time. Um, yes. So there are little scenes like this that you capture. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting because it's not my best draw, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but for me, it's okay because it's interesting the the two layers or, or a lot of layers. Because this is interesting because the guy sit down is this is a, a photo or or draw inside of subway, okay? Subway. Mm -hmm. subway. So I draw the the guy who works the job of the guy only consists in open the door manually <laughs> right so this this historical train subway yeah. uh, built from the england's at the original mm -hmm. and the guy opened the door in movement inside of the tunnel and, and go and have a fresh air <laughs> <laughs> In, in some way, it's <laughs> crazy. Thing. That's crazy. <laughs> so, but it's interesting because inside of the public transportation, you can meet a very, very um, Formal. glamorous, glamorous lady. Mm -hmm. And the other hand, and the other is down another guy who live in the in outside in the streets. Right. So it's very interesting. Very, very interesting. And somebody was asking about mate. Oh, indeed. <laughs> I have one. Tienes tu mate? Ah, ah, tell us. Tell us. With what herba. Is... 
Hierba <laughs> <laughs> mate. Hierba mate. And the mate is the most, um, it's a ritual. It's a ritual. Mm -hmm. ritual. Okay. It's about friend. Obviously, you can take a mate alone, but the spirit of mate is uh, friendly. Yes. The first time that I taste mate, for example, uh, the person who invited me, gave me a mate and, right. okay, thank you. And I have in my hand, he, he, the guy <laughs> said me, no, it's for all. <laughs> and one, one thing I'm scared about <laughs> yes. to this share. This is, not good. this is not good during the pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> but it's, it's about friendly. Right. If you invite, if you, if some, some, some guy invite you to take a mate, it's because you are a friend. <laughs> right. Yes. And you yeah. pass it around. You pass yeah, it around. Yeah. La pipa de la paz. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> okay, right. So. Let's see. Let's look at some more gorgeous drawings. Um, tell us a little bit about this one. Yes, it's uh, interesting because I have a lady in, in front of me. This is a big place, the most uh, big l library in Buenos Aires. I think in all Latin America, uh, it was an uh, uh, antique theater. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, actually now it's a library. Maybe we have 120,000 books inside. Wow. But there are a lot of libraries in Buenos Aires and all the people go to these places to have a book, mm -hmm. take a coffee, and you can stay there maybe all day if you right. want without buy nothing you can oh. go to read there's uh, a book take a book, book yeah a read, read and all whatever you want free if you want right so it's a giant bookstore yes okay yes, yes. okay so, very, we very have we have a few more here this is yes. this this is, uh, si es el Ateneo. Alguien me pregunta si es el Ateneo. Yes, it's the Ateneo library. So this place is interesting because reflect the, uh, the complex or the sophisticated thinking in, in, in all, in part of the culture of Argentine. Argentine, this is a very beautiful uh, building in Buenos Aires. The name is the Barolo. And the architect inspired for the um, in the uh, uh, Divan comedy uh, from Dante Alighieri, I think, El Infierno. Oh, uh, yeah. And there are a lot of allegories, uh, very complex. <laughs> it's very interesting. So, yeah, uh, this looks like Evita, something that we know when you think of, uh, we think of Argentina. Yeah, uh, it's interesting because I love the, um, to explore new tools and in that day I stay in a coffee in the 9 de Julio, the big, uh, the big avenue in, in downtown and draw this building because this is the only one building that the, when the 9 de Julio construction in never uh, uh, Como se dice, eh, no lo demolieron. Is the only one building that no. Eh, they didn't demolish it. Demolish, mm -hmm. demolish, because it's historic and Evita was there. <laughs> they saved it. Good for them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> this is. Uh, and uh, another... I connect. I connect this because uh, it's Argentina is a place for design and this is a very new maybe 10 years uh, the building have 10 years but it's the central of uh, design in a very interesting play the name is it's close to la boca is a very old neighbor and now 
uh, the government uh, in recovery, all the place, and this is inside. I explore, for example, with uh, Brown Ink. This is on maybe is the only one sketch that I have in brown, mm. brown, brown ink. ink. Right. Maybe it's the one, the only one. But it's I love the 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 lights, the shadows. So. Yes. So you've been sketching for you said over forty years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you have an amazing architect. I'm an old man. <laughs> architectural drawings amazing understanding of perspective. What are some things that you're still struggling with, even after all this time? Okay, uh, for a long time, I um, draw portraits or something, mm -hmm. only for photos, but uh, not in life. When I was an urban sketcher officially, <laughs> 10 years ago, I, um, uh, I really, really love the speed of all my friends in urban sketcher movement because all the um, have the courage to draw people in live in movement. Mm -hmm. uh, and now it's a challenge for me. I love uh, draw people in movement now, but not always is <laughs> is the best result. Result, but I love this. In this case, I, I was, uh, I went to the um, final of the tango uh, challenge mm -hmm. of, of the world tango competition and tried to, to capture in movement all the, the bandoneon or the yeah. tango, the dancing. This, this instrument. <laughs> yes, the bandoneon, that's like, I don't know in English, but it's, um, it's very, very it's the same. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. And this is the my view, uh, for example, the newspapers La Nación gave me the opportunity to go there and capture the, the that moment. So it was amazing, but it was a challenge for me uh, to draw and live and capture uh, not all the details because it's not a photo for me, but it, it wasn't easy for me at that moment. So I'm trying <laughs> uh, to, to grow about it. And um, finally, as we're uh, getting close to our challenge time, what would be your advice for people who want to get better? Okay, maybe we think and draw without prejudice. ¿Cómo se dice? Prejuicios? Uh, prejudice. Prejudice about yourself. For example, not think about, I, I can draw. No, don't worry about it. Don't worry about your uh, prejudice about you, yourself. The second, uh, you need to draw all the time inside of the book store, go at the, at the corner, maybe try walking, draw all the time, draw and explore new tools. And third, I think if you learn for teacher, teacher or it's most important for you understand the concepts and how your teacher teacher uh, see the series, see the the elements, uh, connect with play with uh, some place. Not only the technique, the techniques you you can uh, uh, learn. Don't worry about it. Yes. Think about the connection. That's such good advice, Norberto. Thank you so much. And. Finally, here comes the time. Okay. What you would like us to do? Okay, I suggest you uh, have a very common place, for example, your uh, room or something or, or, or object, and draw in a no common point of view. For example, uh, you can stay there at the floor or 
uh, in your bed, but you can uh, turn uh, up your head or or uh, the balcony, see the the place, the the place in a very uh, <laughs> difficult perspective, something like this. I love this. Draw from your bed, or maybe draw from <laughs> under your bed. <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever done that, so I. No, I never. I'm gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> yes, yes. And Norberta, your English, by the way is so good you actually oh, thank did, you. <laughs> did not need, i'm afraid about it <laughs> you did not need a translator but there are some you. some of our listeners are joining um who would love to hear you in spanish maybe okay. explain explain the challenge vas a explicar perfecto. el reto en español ahora ¿Sí? perfecto Dale. puedes tomar alguno de tus objetos si quieres o, o estar en algún lugar que te gusta muy común tu, a lo mejor tu living o puedes estar en la cama y lo más importante es dibujarlo desde un punto de vista diferente, por ejemplo si estás en la cama no dibujar en forma horizontal sino a lo mejor cambiar la mirada mirar hacia arriba, mirar hacia abajo asomarte de tu balcón y mirar hacia abajo a la, a agarrar el mate si estás en Argentina y dibujarlo desde arriba y Rita decía dibujar adentro de la cama no sé <risa> Puede ser. No sabemos. Eso sería en español. Perfecto. Norberto, thank you so much. Oh, I'm sure sketchers would like to know what kind of tools you're using right now. I'm sure it's changing all the time. But if you show us something that you really love right now, a pen or oh, yes. a brush. Yeah. No, yes. Yes. I'm, be I'm very economic. Uh, I have a very economic tools. So. Right. But I have, for example, pens. I use only one or two, very similar. But uh, I'm trying to use an old pens uh, with ink, Chinese ink. Ooh. Very interesting because I am I'm looking for fluid uh, tools. But I'm um, I explore. Uh, digital tools. Ooh, to, uh, oh, it's a challenge, but I I do <laughs> uh, 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 some of this. Obviously, uh, watercolor. Uh, mm -hmm. I have a uh, Winsor Newton watercolors. Uh, it, for me, it's important to find something that you can carry with yourself. I have this one with with uh, my made made home uh, sketchbook and go with uh, all places but i am looking for a good paper for me for example uh, how it works with uh, for example uh, steelman and beer have uh, this flexible uh, uh, option mm -hmm. uh, for me it's important the paper because i draw with ink and watercolor and uh, I usually uh, looking for this play, these papers. Not uh, not all is uh, is good. And the, finally, I change my the the size of my sketchbook. I use uh, Canson, and sometimes I carry this size. So that's all. And I and, uh, I have this one, this brush. Okay, I have a lot, but. I only use one. <laughs> <laughs> right. Always go to the same one, the same favorite one. Yes, I have this one and it, it, new, all new. Roberto, <laughs> muchas gracias, amigo. Qué gusto es. Gracias. So much. We are inspired. Gracias. We are um, inspired and we, um, it was such a pleasure seeing you today. Thanks for joining us. Once again, all the way from Buenos Aires, uh, the amazing Norberto Dorantes. Thank Muchas you. Muchas gracias a todos. Gracias, Rita, y gracias a todos. Chao, chao. Un abrazo. Adiós. <laughs> más. Chao. Sí. Adiós. Well, uh, this was Norberto. It was so lovely to see him. And we're going to keep um, looking at his drawings 
even if he's not here. But this time we have to switch gears and fly to a very different part of the continent of South America, all the way to Quito, Ecuador, the city that's at the height of, I believe, 2,800 meters. So please uh, buckle up because the, the ride could be a little rough, but we will see you on the other side. And hopefully, Mauricio. Hello. It worked. <laughs> Hola. Hola, Mauricio. ¿Cómo está? Muy emocionado. Uh, excuse me for my English. I don't speak English and I need to have your translation. Uh, thank you very, very much for the, the invitation for me. I, I am very happy. Thank you so much for joining us. Tell us, tell us who you are and tell us a little bit of uh, where you are. Uh, I'm from Ecuador. I was born in Turkan. It's a cold and it's a little city. It's at 3,000 meters. It's very cold in the north of Ecuador. However, I travel to study architecture and design in Quito, and I studied. <laughs> I have been a teacher for two years in architect and design school to date. Uh, I give workshops, uh, and so even a passionate, I am a passionate sketcher and watercolorist. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Um, and tell us, how did you and when did you discover urban sketching? Oh, hi. I remember. Uh, it, um, this is, was uh, seven years ago. Uh, we, oh. I was discovered uh, urban sketcher um, with two more professors passionate about drawing and watercolors. And this is in San Francisco Square, uh, maybe seven years ago. And this picture, there, there are many students and many other, other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and what is, how are uh, sketchers and people? It's such a far it's away us. place for us. <laughs> yes, it, it was. Uh, very interesting for urban sketcher. It was a challenge because we decided to picture three big formats, mm -hmm. three meters ahorita, three meters por, por una veinte. Yeah, so each one of these is three meters wide. Un, un sketcher pro. So y bueno, no, groups, and each group had a, um, a leader. Yes. Y, Nuestro mayor reto era finish in three hours. Eh, bueno, lo logramos, ¿no? Ahí, and they had, lo to finish, they had to finish all of them in three hours, and they did it. Yes, yes. Y mucha gente igualmente eh, pintó ahí, gente que pasaba. People walk. Ay, yo quiero, I like it. Ok, entra, pinta. Fue I'm, very, I'm, very beautiful. I'm sure there were a lot of people who stopped by and just were, wow, what, what yeah. are you doing? ¿Qué están haciendo ahí con estos cuadros tan enormes? Sí, bueno, fue impresionante. Yeah. Este es en otra plaza emblemática. Es, uh -huh. eh, it's another famous uh, square in Quito. Yes. Mm -hmm. eh, hace two years ago, eh, ahí están la gente que actualmente llega a Urban Sketch. There are three, 30 people, about 30 people, I, I think. And similar, the people eh, va y <laughs> quiere saber qué estamos haciendo. Okay. What do you do? What are you doing? Eh, lots of, lots of people yeah. who are very interested. And the people invited to the, Ah, ah, yeah, it, it is uh, last year uh, I am in workshop with a private university of architecture and I am in Guapulo. I 
I love Wapulo. I work with uh, work it. Uh, trabajé por ese sector y conozco conozco mucho. Es, es impresionante. Es una ciudad como que se detuvo el tiempo y es muy cerca de Quito. So Mauricio is, is explaining that uh, this is a little town called Guapulo that is a little bit uh, lower than Quito, and um, he's saying that the feeling is as if time has stopped there. Um, it, the architecture yes. is so amazing and, and really, really old. For example, this this domo, this cupola, um, maybe is the 1600s, construida seguramente en 1600s, esa cupola. Okay. So this, this church in the background <coughs> Is, is probably dating back to 1,000, um, to yes. century, mm -hmm. right? Yes. <laughs> y tú ves los techos, the roofs, tú, you can see mucha topografía diferente. Bueno, todo okay. Quito está con yeah. mucha... All of that area is, is high in the mountains, so you always have the uh, slopes and you have very steep angles. Yes, uh, but ah, it, uh, this is this was in, in Cuenca. Uh, I love Cuenca. There are many, many friends in Cuenca. También hay un grupo de sketchers. Ellos consiguieron hace muy poco ser un grupo oficial. In, so this is in a different town called Cuenca, and Mauricio um, has helped to form another chapter there. Has, has ayudado en, en hacer otro, um, otro grupo, ¿no? De, de conocimiento como grupo oficial. Yeah, yeah, so um, grupo official, oficial. official urban sketching um, chapter in Clinton. Yes, uh, this is in Quito. Uh, there are many, uh, hay muchas fotografías de las salidas. Ahí podemos ver algunas de las salidas. Este especialmente es cuando llegaron cerca de 100 personas. <laughs> Uh, in Quito. This is one of the outings in, in Quito, and uh, they're documenting their sketch girls. And this one in particular, more than a hundred people showed up for the sketch girls. Exactly. exactly, yes. Um, nosotros, we, we have, I think, seven, 70 out drawn. So they, um, they got together already over 70 times. In, 70 times, yes. Sí, hemos salido cerca de 70 veces, creo yo, y siempre se está renovando. Y bueno, nosotros fuimos reconocidos hace cinco años como, como grupo oficial. Esta es otra imagen eh, de Cuenca también, cuando Cuenca. me invitaron. Uh, they invited me to uh, esta salida de dibujo en, en Cuenca. Ahí hay mucha gente, mucha Qué gente. Lindo. Igual. Qué lindo. Oh, oh. Oh. It's my friends of Guayaquil. Uh -huh. There are This is yet people. another town called Guayaquil in a different part of, of uh, Ecuador. And es grandísimo este grupo en Guayaquil. Sí, por supuesto. And there are many sketchers. That, somos amigos con Guayaquil, con Cuenca, y esto fue una salida especial que también me invitaron para, para apoyarles, para estar ahí, para motivarles. Entonces, de hecho, vamos a, a trabajar juntos a futuro haciendo otras actividades, ¿no? Uh -huh. Muy grandioso eso. So, Mauricio, tell us a little bit about what inspires you in Quito and what, um, what you like to draw. This is you in Quito. Uh, habla, háblanos un poquito sobre lo que te inspira a ti y que dibujas normalmente. Bueno, es, es, I, en Quito, eh, I have eh, 12 eh, monumentals eh, church. Eh, Quito fue declarada como patrimonio, entonces ahí hay muchos. Me gusta mucho dibujar las, cúp las cúpulas, los techos, las calles, los rincones. Mauricio loves to paint um, the church domes, um, the little streets, slopes. Domos, roofs, <coughs> bueno, y la gente, también me, me inspira mucho dibujar a la gente, de pronto ahí no hay mucho, pero 
Sí, esas son las cúpulas que, que me encanta. Esto también es en Cuenca. Me gusta mucho hacer una composición a partir de las cúpulas. So Mauricio is often starts with the with the dome and he builds his composition um, starting with the. No, yes, this is Santo Domingo. This is. Uh, okay. It, 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 I I like this. Uh, for example, the, in this case, uh, yo hago, I made a composition tomando en consideración las, las cúpulas y luego el resto de, de edificios. O sea, es, es fácil de pronto lograr una buena composición con estos elementos. So he starts with the church with the dome and then he builds his composition and he says it's very easy once you, once you have the dome in. Es igualmente en Quito, una de las salidas. Eh, yo muchas veces la gente me invento, la, pero es importante poner la, la gente ahí, me invento la, la gente oh, para que haya un elemento de composición. You, he makes up his people uh, like a typical architect. <laughs> Estás, estás haciendo la técnica de los arquitectos, ¿no? Siempre, siempre. Siempre. Hay una panorámica. Here's a, a, this is Quito, right? Yes, yes, this is, this is Quito, the mountains of Quito. It is the occidental part uh, to, to Quito. It's, vivimos cerca de un volcán todo el tiempo. Yeah, there's a volcano. And um in the background we have another typical street oh por ejemplo si esto es, es lo que me gusta esos desafíos the challenges for of the topography or the house eh, como puedes solucionar una topografía la perspectiva con este tipo de, de, de vistas entonces es un reto pero the, las complicaciones the challenge is to draw perspective correctly when you always have streets sloping up and sloping down yes yes how do you solve this how do you solve this uh challenges when you're always looking up or down más gradas ahí pueden ver este es un sitio un típico sitio mire más gradas igual i love these estas vistas con escaleras, cambios de niveles. So there's always change of levels, always um, stairs on the streets. Mauricio, let me ask you, what do you think is unique to the Sketchers community in Ecuador? I, I think um, eh, usamos similar tools in all the world. However, eh, en Quito, eh, nosotros no usamos muchos boceteros. Bueno, yo sí, pero la mayoría de gente no. So, for example, uh, one of the, he says one of the unique things is that in Quito, uh, they don't use a lot of sketchbooks. That yes. Sometimes has a sketchbook, but a lot of people don't use sketchbooks. Sí, lo que hacemos es cortar hojas así y muchas veces las reciclamos, por ejemplo, esto tiene esto, tiene esto. Y luego yo la colecciono y hago un sketchbook. Entonces, es un poco difícil conseguir acá boceteros y sobre todo, como decía Norberto, que aguante la tinta. So he says that it's, it's, um, what they do instead of using sketchbooks is use large sheets of paper and they cut them. And then they use both sides of, of the paper because they have to kind of, um, they don't have a lot of materials and, and sketchbooks are expensive, hard to come by in, um, in Quito. And so um, it's very, very hard to buy sketchbooks that take watercolor well. Really, really. And, and other things, I, I, I think uh, nosotros uh, no, no escribimos mucho. When we no don't do a lot of writing in our, in our no. sketchbook. Yeah. Porque trabajamos en láminas, no en sketchbook. Seguramente well, sea por eso, pero... Because they work on this uh, sheets of paper, not in sketchbooks. Yes, sin embargo, yo tengo 12 o 15 boceteros y a propósito, 
Este es un bocetero muy especial porque fue regalado por mi amigo Norberto. So about uh, 12 to 15 sketchbooks and this one is very very special for him because it was given to him by his friend Norberto. Yes, hace five years ago, gracias Norberto que debe estar por ahí escuchándome. Bueno, y entonces lo acabé hace mucho rato y fue para mí muy fue especial, fue especial. Y bueno, a partir de ese momento tengo muchos, yo siempre trato de conseguir sketchbook Yeah, y otra trying to find sketchbooks okay. uh, this the, the one by norberto is uh, is now finished so yeah. so if you bueno. live in ecuador please bring sketchbooks and art supplies <laughs> um mauricio uh let me ask you this what would be your um advice for for other latin uh for, for other sketches from south america how to get communities um, started on urban sketching. You've done so much in Ecuador, trying to get groups started. What would be your advice? Y ahora te traduzco. Vas entendido. ¿Qué es tu consejo para, para la gente en otros sitios de Sudamérica? Para cómo animar a la gente, cómo empezar a grupos de, de urban sketchers. No, there are many, many groups of, pero eh, lo más importante creo es eh, que la gente, o sea, que hay alguien que de pronto promueva o, o lidere, ¿no? Eso es muy, muy importante. Y encontrar sobre todo gente que, que ame hacer esto, que disfrute de hacer esto, porque ser sketcher es no una, un nombre, es una forma de vivir, es una filosofía de vivir. So to, to be a sketcher, you need to, um, it's not just the name, it's, it's, it's a way of life, it's a way of thinking and seeing the world. Creo que eso es más, lo más importante, que, que sientan, feeling sketchers. <laughs> yes, you have to feel it. And uh, do you have any plans for maybe... Um, organizing a South American symposium of sorts, or South American reunion. ¿Tienes algunos planes para organizar algo en, en América Latina? Bueno, eh, nos gustaría justamente un, algo que sería importante para Sudamérica es que Urban Sketcher come to, to Sudamérica. <laughs> you, you and other people uh, beside, uh, can you please, um, Pienso que eso sería muy, muy, muy importante. Y sí, la idea sería realizar un simposio en Sudamérica o Latinoamérica con su apoyo, ¿no? Y creo que se dispararía Sudamérica de una manera impresionante, impresionante, yeah. porque... Yes, so Mauricio is saying that it's important instructors, if you're listening to us right now, Um, come to places like Ecuador to teach. This will really get the community ignited. And uh, having a, planning some sort of a, a big reunion or symposium in South America will also. Yeah, entonces, I hope uh, next year or two years uh, we may, uh, o sea, podamos organizar en Sudamérica un simposio de Euro Sketcher en español y en inglés. <laughs> yes. We will dream of that time, Mauricio. Vamos a soñar con ese ah, tiempo, pero okay. por el momento, uh, explícanos qué es lo que... Yeah, que no, la, Tell us the, the challenge is you, you begin with uh, una, una mancha, tú empiezas con una mancha, se seca la mancha, dibujas y luego haces contrastes con, de sombras, con colores eh, fríos. Es lanzar una mancha y sobre la mancha dibujar. Okay, I explain in English. So what Mauricio wants us to do is start with a wash. And that's a lot of times how he starts his sketches. So pick either cool or warm wash of watercolor and um, kind of throw that, uh, throw that paint um, on the paper and wait for it to dry. And, and then make a sketch uh, with your pen, pencil on top 
and uh, then you can go back and add shadows, but try to stay within your within your color um, color scheme. So either cool, cool or warm colors. Yeah, es una forma muy creativa de de abordar un, un dibujo, un sketch, de una manera muy libre, muy 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 creativa. So Mauricio thinks that it's a very uh, freeing way to 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 draw um, in a very creative way. Well, uh, ¿quieres mostrarnos algo más? ¿Quieres mostrar tus herramientas? Ya hablamos un poco. No, tal vez sí. Bueno, a veces digo, ¿cuántas cosas debe haber aquí dentro de un lapicero? <risa> y quiero sacarlas. Algo como esto. Eh, yo tengo una caja de acuarelas, pero es al interior diferente. Es creada. Entonces, aquí hay diferentes marcas. Hay diferentes... Yeah, so like many of us, he has many different uh, brand names of watercolors all in one box. Uh, I, I love this brush. This is my favorite brush, and this is my favorite brush. Uh, muchas veces trabajo con esto también. Uh -huh. Lips. But estas son mis herramientas favoritas, realmente. That's, that's amazing. And uh, what a treat to be in this beautiful city of Quito with you, so high up in the mountains, so far away from all of us. And uh, one thing I wanted to mention too is Quito, I think, was the first place to be designated as the UNESCO World Heritage Site. So it's sí. a very, very special place and we can't wait to go sketch there. Los esperamos algún momento. <laughs> Gracias, ok, muchas gracias a ustedes. A so, we're back and almost at the end of our show. Thank you so much. This was another episode number nine of um, USK Talks. And we've had an amazing um, uh, opportunity today to talk to some sketchers of South America, um, the continent that I hope will take a central role in the new chapter in urban sketching history. So please join us next week in a new time zone. And uh, I wanted to make sure I thank the amazing USK Talks team. There are eight of us who are working very hard across, I think, six time zones at least. <laughs> Um, we're doing this uh, because we love the community, because this is, it gives us purpose right now at this time to, to continue doing this. So I wanted to mention um, their names. Uh, Elizabeth Alley is our writer. Uh, Riona Kuthe is our graphics and social media. Christina Wald is in video editing and production. Ludi VC is our USK Talks coordinator. Noga Grossman is our social media director. Rob Sketcherman is, of course, our beloved host and also a creator of many of our graphics. Uh, Mario Linares from Lisbon, a former uh, education director, is one of the brains behind the show. And I'm Rita Sabler, um, your current education director and the host for today. Thank you, thank you so much. We'll see you next week. We love you. Keep sketching. You have some challenges for this week. And maybe just because we were just in Argentina, I will leave you with a little bit of tango <laughs> until, the, until the feed breaks. This is actually my little band doing sound check, uh, playing Silueta Porteña, which is a famous, uh, famous milonga. Thank you.